McCowan and Shannon back uh, with you. We are uh, joined today by the, well, I guess you can still say new, John, can't you? Well, I... I As opposed to game yet. No, I wonder if he's cashed a check, though. Yes. Oh, I, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm guessing that's the case. The new head coach of the Vegas Golden Knights, Bruce Cassidy, is with us. A reunion of sorts um, with uh, George McPhee uh, from, what, 20 years ago now. Boy, that's hard to believe, isn't it? Yeah, time flies. Uh, yeah, always uh, appreciated. George gave me my first job in the NHL in Washington. Yep. Um, always appreciated that. Learned a lot between now and then, I, I, uh, I think. So it's good to be back working with him. Yeah, no, there, there is some irony, though, I think, Bruce, when you consider that between your first job in the NHL and your second job in the NHL spans, you know, a decade and a bit. <laughs> and then your second job to your third job was days quite a difference yeah uh the first one you know obviously in washington i was a young guy had a lot to learn didn't go as well as i'd like took a lot from it though um and then had to get back to work different levels just the way it works out sometimes you never know if you're going to get a second chance right in this business there's a lot of guys like me that are waiting for their second one but when i did get it i was ready i'll say that john and had a good good situation in boston real solid group there so uh, this one, uh, you know, you start building your resume, I guess, and and uh, you get you get fired. It's never uh, a good thing. You're sort of licking your wounds, and then all of a sudden you're right back at it. So this one was a uh, was a obviously a much quicker recovery and a, a real good landing spot. Uh, how strange was it to be on the draft floor and not be at the Bruin table? Yeah, that was different. Uh, I mean, I stayed up top. We didn't have a first round pick, but still wandering around just. Uh, uh, you know, seeing some of the guys. So, but I'll get used to it. You're, you're 14 years, you know, between Providence and Boston. That's a lot of black and gold. So uh, a little bit different. Well, you're sort of still in black and gold, but a different kind of black and gold. Um, let's talk about that, the situation in Boston. I, I was trying to think, and John would be better at this. Well, both of you are probably better at this than me, but I was trying to think of a more surprising um, firing of a, of a head coach than yours uh i certainly was shocked by it um i suspect you were too or did you was there something going on at the end of the regular season last year or during the playoffs that led you to believe that might happen uh, no i think everyone had their end of the year presser myself donnie uh, cam neely i'd met with donnie shortly after that and we were preparing for the next year you know discussing our staff etc and then it got quiet for a couple of weeks the um you know, down in Toronto, your way, the, uh, uh, what do you call it there? The prospects were meeting, right? To do the mm -hmm. testing and, and such. And so I don't know, they, they probably met with ownership in Buffalo. They usually do at the end of the year. Maybe they just had a different plan. And then it, uh, so it was surprising in terms of the timing. I thought if it was going to happen, it would happen at the end, right away at the end of the year. But uh, it took a little time. Well, I don't want to put you on the spot, but there were stories that came out that suggested that the players, your players in Boston had something to do with it. Did you did tell me about your relationship? I mean, you, you, your reputation is that you're a pretty tough coach, but you had success with these guys. Do you think the players had a grudge? Uh, I'm sure there's always a few players that aren't happy um, for different reasons. I think if you look at our record, uh, I mean, I was I was paid to have success with the team, get wins. We did that. Did we upset some people along the way? Uh, I don't know. Challenge some people to to be better. Yes. Uh, I don't think the team ever quit on on the staff at all. Myself, um, right to the final end, we lost in Game Seven against a real good team. Um, so I'm sure there was player feedback. There always is, Bob, at the end of the year meetings, right, with the GMs and stuff. So maybe there was some some stuff there. Donnie just told me they wanted a new voice. I didn't get too much into it with him. Um, you know, I, I respect what he has to say. He's, we've been together 14 years. And some of the messaging he said, should, you know, I should try to change. I'm a little bit blunt at times or, or too direct uh, for certain guys, but I, I don't know. I, I got along well with most of the players have good relationships with some of them been around a long time, uh, obviously, because I had some of them in Providence like Marshy and Rask and still with Krug and some of the newer guys as well. McAvoy pasta, they're young guys. So I, I was proud of my record with young guys uh, there, but uh, I, I, you know, sometimes you hear things as well, but I, I thought our relationship was fine. Uh, as I said, better with some than others. And I think that's not atypical for most coaches around the league. Bruce, yeah. is, it, is it easier to uh, continue communication with guys you did have in the minors when yes. you become an NHLer? And, and, how, and how, does, how do you translate that to guys that 
or you only have when they're with the, the big league team? Yeah, I think what happens is like when I took over, for example, some of the guys that had crew, Rask, Marshy, Kevin Miller, McQuaid at lower levels, they were like, listen, he's going to challenge it. Uh, you know, he's going to want to get the best out of you, but he cares about you. So, you know, just listen to the message, you know, and, and, and take it, uh, you know, for what it's worth. So I think that's definitely easier. They've seen some of that side. Uh, whereas new guys, it might take them a while. And it did for some of them. Some of them go, wow, you know, this guy, you know, he wants it right now and um, expects, you know, a standard right away and he's not going to let it slip. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that either. I just think the players are different now and you do have to be careful how you message. But at the end of the day, you do have to hold guys accountable or, you know, I don't think you have much of a team. So, yes, it's easier with guys that have sort of seen your coaching style than those that have. I'm just I'm also curious that uh, uh, how you had changed from the first day you were the Bruin coach to the last day you were the Bruin coach. How did you evolve? Well, I, I think what happens there is the expectation is, is Stanley Cup every year. It's that type of market. It's about championships. It's the way it is for the Red Sox, the Pats, Celtics. So I think you, you learn that in a hurry. So I don't know if there was a lot of change there other than I think as you go along, you realize it's not it's not that easy to win. There's 31 teams that don't every year. Um, so you, you can't let it consume you, I guess, so to speak, that you're not going to get there every year. We came the closest, obviously, in 19. I think that one still hurts. Right. Um, but how did I change? I think just... You get a little bit um, worn down because of those those expectations after a while. If you don't think you're meeting them, I think that's human nature. So I'd say that that's something that certainly can get to you in that type of market. Mm-hmm.